Adrienne Barbeau plays the part of Carol, and she is Maud's daughter in the CBS show of the same name. Well, it seems to me that this is a tough part for an actor because when you're up against a very aggressive, dominating person such as Maud is, she is covers, you know, she's bigger than life. It would seem to me that a lot of actors might shy away from a role because you would be in the shadow of a person like that. You know, I've been asked this before, and I'm not aware of it as we're working. I don't think any of us are. B is much more low-key when she's rehearsing than, than when it actually happens, and she's not like that in real life. And I had a mother who could have put Maude to shame, so <laughs> I had a lot of background experience for it. <laughs> so it doesn't bother you? No, no, not at all. Do you like the idea of being a part of a series that's got a pretty good track reputation seems like it's going to be in there for a while oh yes yes and i like the idea of being a part of a series that has dealt with some socially significant things rather than just your everyday comedy yes in reading about you i get the impression that to use a much overworked word that you are an involved kind of person that you do read the inside as well as the front pages of the newspaper that you do have thoughts and that you're an activist in some things. In some things, yes. Um, and partially because of the role, I think. I've become more involved because the character is, is sort of involved, you know, or maybe because of the people I'm working with, the producers, and, and because we're dealing with these things. It's piqued my interest. But in yet your background, if you want to say that musical comedy is more frivolous, your stage in your show business background has been more frivolous rather than working with a greater theater of ideas. You've done, you know, like uh, The Fiddler on the Roof and Grease and, and musicals, which aren't thought of as being very deep. It was a, pos a problem of just not getting hired for the other things. <laughs> <laughs> I went to New York as a, a, well, I auditioned as a singer, I guess, because for a, someone coming to New York without much background experience and without a union card, it's easier to get into a musical comedy audition to a, an open call for a chorus member, a, a principal, than it is to get in on a straight drop, dramatic role, you know. So I just sort of fell into it like that. You, you sing, you move well, you dance. I, you're sitting down, and they'll have to take my word for it, but you have a very comely figure, and I would think that you would be great in leotards or whatever. <laughs> Well, but not in the... I'm a great discotheque dancer. <laughs> I mean, I really discotheque up a storm. I did it for a living. <laughs> it's a terrible job, but it, it kept me going while I was auditioning for... Keeps you fit, though, doesn't it? Yes. Why do you say it's a terrible job? Well, it's an extremely sexist job, you know, but it was, it was more than that. It was going out to New Jersey to these terrible little bars and standing up there and having people gawk at you and right. make nasty comments or vulgar comments. And, but it was the kind of thing where I needed my days free to audition and take classes, and it paid well, and it was something I could do at night by my own choice. I could work one night a week or three nights a week. I worked through an agent. And I was pretty straight about it. I made sure nobody bothered me, and I'd sit in a John and read. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, paid the bills. I once had an interview with Joey Heatherton, and I had to raise an eyebrow at me once because I said, I said, you're a, a discotheque dancer, or you're dance the boogaloo. She said, no, I am a dancer, period. You know, she thought it encompassed much more than that. I guess, in all fairness to the accuracy of it, that's true. For Joey it is. For me it's not. I haven't really danced professionally for years. I studied as a child and uh, was sort of forced into it and ended up hating taking class, so I really haven't. And walk around saying, oh, I should go back to class, but I never do. One of the good, commendable things about you as Carol is the fact that you seem to have such a good knowledge of your own parent. And those of us who are parents don't always feel that our children really know us as we are. You seem to have a good grasp of your mother. Well, as I said, she's not unlike my mother, and uh, when we started the role, you know, I, there is that danger because Maude yells and screams of, of taking on an angry reaction, and it, it seemed that what was required was to humor her instead, and a lot of love, you know, and I really care about B, too, so it's a very simple thing. All right, what happens? Now, switching to a life question, what happens to the woman who does have a good brain, such as yourself? Or B, you know, Maud, who has definite ideas about peace and war and about politics and the way her country is going, has definite ideas 
but finds that society says, well, if you voice them with any enthusiasm, we're going to label you a pushy woman. What is the answer to that kind of, a, of an attack? I would rather be labeled a pushy woman than not speak for what I believe in. Uh, I think you, if you do believe in something, and maybe it's reactionary or uh, more liberal than other people, if you believe in it, then you've got to speak out, or at least I have to. Um, and I don't mind being labeled a pushy woman if that's what they want to label me, because sooner or later I'll find someone who doesn't mind having a pushy woman around, right. you know. Uh, you it doesn't frighten me. You, you, you mean you're, you're talking about a man who doesn't regard it as a threat to his own yes. image yeah. of masculinity, then? Or a, a woman, friends, you know, even just in, in a social circle. Much of your background has been in a few months or a short run here, a medium-long run, in various plays. Now that you're a contract player, you're a regular uh, cast member of Maud, Will your life have a greater stability and allow you to do some things that up to now you hadn't been allowed to do? It has already. Um, although when I was in Fiddler, I was there for two and a half years on Broadway, which is much too long. But nonetheless, I was still trying to get another job and auditioning. Now with this series, at least for the first year, I found that I was able to think about other things. I didn't have to think about the next show or the next audition. and. Uh, and so I've had different emotions than I used to, and I've gotten involved in work outside of the theater. Like what? I have gotten involved with a woman's clinic in, in Los Angeles, the Community Service Center, which is a, offers health care for women. We offer pap smears, birth control, and a fairly new technique in abortion called menstrual extraction or menstrual regulation. I started out as a volunteer counselor, and I ended up running the place because we're all volunteers, and people come and go. And since I knew I could be there for a couple of months, I sort of accepted the job. And I am very enthusiastic about the work that goes on there. The procedure, the extraction procedure, is a very simple, safe technique and probably will outmode all other forms of abortion in several years. It's being used throughout the country now, and Planned Parenthood is setting up clinics throughout the country using this procedure. Well, obviously, Adrian, you're a very thoughtful person, as well as a very talented person. What kind of man will be interested in you? Will be interested in me? Yes. <laughs> and well, I don't know what kind of man will be interested in me. I know what kind of man I'm interested in. <laughs> I would obviously have to be someone who didn't, who was not threatened, as you say, by an exchanging of roles, because a woman in our business, or someone who's doing a series, is making her own living, is fairly independent. I love people who can make me laugh, and it's very important to me. And of course, I can't be asked to be home every night washing dishes and then washing laundry, although I don't mind it, and I love to cook, you know, but... Um, I guess it's somebody who is not threatened by a, a breaking down of society's roles, male and female roles. And you say you, somebody who makes you laugh, and I would say only, if I had dimples like that, <laughs> I would like somebody who made me laugh, too. How nice Thank you, you are. Thank you very much. And may you run on that series as long as you want to. Adrienne Barbeau, who plays a part of Maud's daughter, Carol, on the CBS show. Maud, of course, here on Channel 11 and WHS-TV and CBS. We'll be back with more of Omelette in just...